How's it going there everyone? It's Mr. Zandlover here bringing you guys a brand new anime discussion. And for today's anime guys, we are going to be talking about Cheating Craft Episode 5 and Episode 6 guys. Granted though guys, Episode 5 wasn't that as entertaining as I actually thought it was. But Episode 6 is continuing on to be much more interesting due to the fact that the lore of the universe that is actually created is actually starting to become more interesting and more relevant in the actual episode itself guys. But granted guys, let's look at back at episode 5 guys. Episode 5 was just a pure fan service episode guys. It was just teenagers in bikinis, teenagers in swimsuits, teenagers in short shorts. It was this all all encompassing summer episode guys. The pure embodiment of teenage hormones itself. And I thought to myself that was very funny at the way they were kind of going with that episode due to the fact that a lot of the actual references in the episode I felt like it was actually based on Hollywood shark references due to the fact that the actual villain in that episode was actually a shark with a human brain and the teacher itself starting to actually be showcased itself more and more antagonistic actual views due to the fact that that's the only teacher that actually has is seemingly taking down the students due to personal gains and I thought to myself that was actually only the interesting part to see what kind of teacher was actually doing that because remember the other teachers are actually just following protocol but this teacher, no, this actual went back to down to human basic and stuff. But like I said, the reason that the teacher was doing that, because it was actually parroting off a movie, The Deep Blue, guys. Deep Blue movie. It was basically a Hollywood film with uh, Samuel L. Jackson. It was a very good movie, guys. It was about sharks that were genetically enhanced by human scientists and then, you know, etc., etc. And it kind of reminded me of that a little bit, the, the way they were... All the students were actually being taken down and they were just like the bras were just being ripped apart the guys were just kind of actually being excited throughout the whole entire time looking at the females and i'm here thinking like it, it kind of parodies off shark films in its in a sense guys it was pretty funny don't get me wrong but other than that episode 5 wasn't really that as entertaining as one would think so other than that because after in the end of the day guys it was literally just a, a fan service episode granted though like i said episode 6 then moves on to actually showcasing a very, 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 very interesting part. Because episode 6 now, guys, is starting to showcase Shokatsu Mume against Renu, guys. And like I said, these two characters, it seems that these two characters have finally actually became in, in contact with each other and, and now are in combat. And I'm loving the way that the episode actually encompassed itself due to the fact that the way that each of the students were actually being interrogated by who knows who. We don't know if it's a teacher, if it's a, a certain person, or if it's an important figure, or if it's a student itself. We don't know that for sure, but the episode was enti enticing us into the fact that it, we were getting a look at how the other students viewed Mume and Renu with themselves. Granted, though, throughout the whole episode, it was kind of confusing at first as to wondering what was going on. But later on in the episode, you do start catching on to and you're wondering, okay, this is what's actually really happening. And what's really happening is that uh, Mumei actually was fighting Renu. We don't know on what terms what they were fighting for or if it was apparently uh, off of the disagreement or anything like that. But apparently these two were in heated combat and apparently at the end of the episode Mumei dies. You know, main character finally dies. I'm guessing it's just more for tension purposes and giving the viewers right there, uh, giving a climax right there in a sense. Due to the fact that you know we actually haven't really been given that in the actual episodes, but this episode was parroting a lot, a lot of other animes, guys. It, it parried off Kuroku no Basket. It parried off a lot of Yaoi fan fiction in the sense this episode was full of it. Due to the fact that the other main characters were actually, like I said, that when they were being interrogated, they were sh showing themselves how they viewed Mumei's relationship with Renu, and I laughed in myself because is that how they see them? They see them as as a gay couple. Because <laughs> it, most of the time, these guys were practically almost kissing. And there was granted there was one episode where they were in the bathroom themselves, and they actually they actually saw each other's penises. And you're here wondering as to, um, is that how they see each of the characters? But I'm here thinking like, I could see that actually happening. I didn't really see that as a parody or as an actual eyewitness. No, 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 no. I see that as the main character acting like that regardlessly because the way that the main character is, he does have that kind of flamboyance in himself. You know, nothing wrong with that, but just saying, just come out, man. Just come out. Don't worry. We won't we won't judge you. 
But like I said, though, the episode was actually, like I said, it was still entertaining. And granted, we also got another parody off of 91 Days. I love that scene where the two main characters off of 91 Days in the promotional poster where they're showcasing each with each other face to face, guns face facing each other. They did the same thing, but in a comical sense. Instead, Mue and Renew were actually just having basically their fingers up to face to face in a cathedral of some sort. And like I said, it was very inter entertaining to see as to we seeing other parodies of animes in introduced in this actual anime, guys. Like I said, the lore itself is starting to become more and more relevant, but with parody still involved. But like I said, though, guys, the episode itself did end right there and then with the main character actually, like I said, dying. But that's about it, though. But let me know down in the comments below, guys, if I missed any parodies at all throughout both episode 5 and episode 6. Because, like I said, that was basically it for throughout the whole episode. It was just basically kind of giving us a a sidetracked view of what the characters view the main characters themselves and like I said it was pretty interesting too as to seeing I would say Koi actually looking and giving a Shakespearean actual duet in a sense it was pretty interesting to see what her personification of what's going on around her and that's how she sees her life in a sense in a very exaggerated tone remember Shakespeare always kind of did that he likes to be very over exaggerated in his actual themes in itself and that's what Koi was doing she was over exaggerated a whole entire you could say parody right there in a sense but like I said though let me know down in the comments if I missed any parodies and what did you guys think about the anime episodes 5 and 6 did you guys find them entertaining as much as I did and let me know what you guys think about what's gonna happen in the next following episodes guys like I said the next episode I'm hoping that they actually introduce more and more parodies at least give a little bit more action involved like I said the action in this anime isn't up to like I would say 91% but it's actually like I said it's enjoyable it's enjoyable and passable but like I said let me know down in the comments and as always guys if you guys enjoy my content give a like comment share and subscribe for more anime discussions and as always guys have a wonderful day but this is Mr. Zen signing out